In a typically developing pregnancy, an embryo can usually be visualized on ultrasound by about six or six and a half weeks. A blighted ovum, also called an anembryonic pregnancy, occurs when the gestational sac forms, but there is no embryo developing inside of that sac. So this results in an empty gestational sac that can easily be visualized on ultrasound. Blighted ovums are a very common cause of first trimester miscarriage, but why do they happen and what can you do to prevent them from happening? I'm Katie Lee, CGC, a certified multi-state licensed genetic counselor, and I've personally experienced five miscarriages, including two blighted ovums. And today I'm talking about why do blighted ovums or anembryonic pregnancies happen? We all want an answer when something difficult and unexpected happens, and it's important to understand that there is so much we do not yet understand about early pregnancy and pregnancy loss. That being said, there is one extremely common cause, the most common cause of first trimester miscarriages, and that is chromosomal abnormalities. About 50% of first trimester miscarriages are due to chromosome imbalances. And how do those chromosome imbalances happen? Well, typically they occur when the sperm cell or the egg cell that went to form an embryo came along with an extra or missing chromosome or multiple extra missing chromosomes. Chromosome imbalances are entirely out of our control. There is no way we can prevent our sperm cells or our egg cells from having chromosome errors. What we do know is that the chance for a chromosomally abnormal pregnancy increases as the age of the egg source increases. Most pregnancies with missing or extra chromosomes result in miscarriage. That means that the risk for miscarriage also increases as the egg source's age increases. Multiple studies have been done to quantify the risk for pregnancy loss, including blighted ovum. Here, I'm going to show a graph from a study called Maternal Age and Fetal Loss, where over a million pregnancy outcomes were tracked to estimate the association of age of the egg source and the risk for pregnancy loss. The risk for pregnancy loss, including first trimester losses, is the lowest in the youngest age group. So take a look at the green line in the graph I'm showing here. In our 20s, about 12 to 15% of pregnancies result in a loss. By age 35, one out of five or 20% of pregnancies result in a loss. And at the age of 42 years, more than half of intended pregnancies result in a loss. The only way to potentially determine the cause of your miscarriage or your blighted ovum is with testing that can be done on the tissue, which could be collected either at home if you miscarry at home or during a procedure performed by your doctor. If tissue from the pregnancy can be collected, your doctor might be able to order a genetic test called POC, products of conception, that can confirm if the loss was due to a chromosome imbalance. If you'd like to learn more about whether this may be an option for you, I definitely recommend discussing it with your doctor, but you can also check out my YouTube video here on products of conception testing, where I share two of my POC results from my blighted ovums. As someone who's experienced multiple miscarriages, this testing was really important important to help me understand why could we identify a cause for my miscarriages. Whether this is your first loss though, or your third, if you want to attempt to understand the cause of your miscarriage, talk to your doctor about the POC testing. A very common question is, what can I do to reduce my chance to have a chromosomally abnormal pregnancy or reduce my chance for miscarriage? Unfortunately, there is no proven diet, medication, supplement, lifestyle change that can eliminate the possibility for a blighted ovum or eliminate the possibility for a miscarriage. What I suggest is if you want to better understand your chances for a healthy ongoing pregnancy and your risk to have a miscarriage in a future pregnancy, you should have a discussion with your doctor that takes into account your personal pregnancy history, fertility evaluation, your age, and the medical history of both you and your partner, or if you're an egg source, you and your sperm source. If you've already experienced multiple miscarriages, or you've been trying to conceive for six or more months, you might wanna consider scheduling an appointment with a reproductive endocrinologist. This is a type of doctor that has extra training and expertise related to getting pregnant and staying pregnant. And reproductive endocrinologists can help their patients understand some of their options for conception and how those options might impact your chance for an ongoing pregnancy. Reproductive endocrinologists can offer types of assisted reproductive technology like IVF. And along with IVF, a patient could consider 
genetic testing on embryos called PGTA, pre-implantation genetic testing for aneuploidy. I've done a whole video on this topic. This is a type of genetic test that can help patients and their doctor identify embryos that are chromosomally normal, that are going to have the lowest risk for miscarriage and a highest chance of an ongoing typical pregnancy. So a reproductive endocrinologist could help explain those types of options. If you haven't already checked out my other YouTube video explaining exactly what a blighted ovum is, check that out. And if you like this video, please like, please subscribe, and consider downloading some of my digital downloads, including my pregnancy tracker and my blighted ovum care guide. You can find those at katieleecgc.com. Take care.